Another pretty hem finish is a rolled hem. I often use it on a sheer fabric like this because it's a nice, delicate way to hem your garment. I've got this swatch already pressed with just a very narrow, maybe 3 16 inch turn. I'm going to put a stitch right along this fold. Check where the needle is. Yeah, it's right as close as I can be, pretty much, about a sixteenth of an inch away from the fold. need to trim away the extra seam allowance as close to the stitching as I can get. So I've got my little sharp snippers. Trimming this away is going to make your little rolled hem as fine and delicate as we want it to be. If you leave this, it's going to add a little bit of bulk. Be careful because it would be easy to cut through to the outside of your garment. Now I'll fold it one more time over and let's give it a little finger press. I'm not going to pin it, but if you feel like it will help you, go ahead. This time I'm trying to sew close to that left side edge, but it ideally this is a very narrow little rolled hem, so you might almost be stitching just in the center of it, depending on how small you're able to make it. And you do have that original stitch line. You might be stitching on top of it. It doesn't really matter. It's not necessarily a guideline for you, and it doesn't show from the outside. The first stitching, only the new stitching will show. So use it if it helps you, but you can also just ignore it. Here it is finished. You can see two lines of stitching from the wrong side, but on the right side, you have just one nice, neat row of stitching with a very fine, delicate hem. The last hem I'd like to show you is the blind hem. This one is often a surprise to people that they can actually do a blind hem by machine on their sewing machine, but most people do have the stitch, they just don't really know what it's for. And a blind hem is a really nice finish on like a tailored pant or skirt. It won't show at all from the outside, so it's the cleanest, most minimal finish you can do. The preparation for this hem is to press up, and you really do want to use the iron and press this one because it's pretty hard to do without pressing. I've got about a half inch turned first, and then a wider amount. We've got about an inch or an inch and a quarter. I'll want to put some pins to hold this in place. I'm going to place the pin so it goes in and out a little bit away from this edge because I need to still be able to flip this back and access this quarter inch or so of the second fold and I need to be sure to place all my pins that way. Every machine has a set of symbols that illustrate the different types of stitch. You are looking for the one that looks like this. It's actually a straight stitch combined with a zigzag, and that's what's going to give us our blind hem stitch. So on this machine, it's letter F. I'm going to change the machine setting to F. And our stitch length at two and a half should be fine. We might also need to increase the width. Some machines are preset with their length and width once you select your stitch, so you'll just do what's necessary for your machine. 
This stitch is really all about that setup like I showed you. So now we're flipping back the folded hem to access this little underlip. And that's where our stitching is actually going to take place. Make a few straight stitches. Let's see how many. That was two, three, four, and now I can see the needles moving into a zigzag. So my goal here is when the needle lowers on the left that it's going to just catch into the fold. Maybe just getting one or two threads of that fold, taking a little stitch, and then it's going to come back over and repeat the straight stitches again. So it definitely takes a little bit of playing around with your adjustments and your position. One, two, three, four, whoops, five went over and I think we might have missed that one. You definitely want to practice this stitch on a swatch before you go to your final garment because it is a little bit tricky, but the results are worth it. Once you get the positioning right, you won't have to keep adjusting, but it can take a few repeats to make sure you're really in the right place. So this time the zig is again biting right in. I think it caught, it can be hard to see. These last few are actually going a little farther into the fold, which I'm doing on purpose because I want you to see what happens when you go a little too far into the fold. There's our last zigzag and we can take a couple back stitches. From the back side, you see that we had the straight stitches alternating with a zigzag every fifth stitch and ideally we just caught a bite right into the thread or two of that fold. A few places I did miss it and that's probably going to happen to you and at the bottom I actually went a little too far in and I'll show you what that looks like from the outside. This is the right side, and I did catch most of the stitches. In an ideal scenario, once you've practiced, you'll get these nice tiny stitches. Those are when I just caught that one or two threads of the fold, and if those stitches were purple, you can see that they would basically disappear right into the fabric. I did miss one or two. If you do that, it's not going to be a big problem as long as you don't miss more than that. If you do, you'll just have to go back and try it again. These stitches are a little bit bigger because that's where I went a little bit over the fold. A little press will get rid of that crease. It's a really clean and minimal way to finish fancy garments. Seam finishing and hemming are really important parts of your design process. Choosing them wisely is the key to sewing really well-constructed clothing that will last a lifetime.